So I'm going to teach you a couple of more techniques uh, and then I'm going to send you loose, right? Because I've already made videos on two balloon animals, two balloon hats, three balloon animals, holidays, doonies, all of that stuff's already made. So now we're just focusing on the techniques to get you into more complicated animals, okay? So the first technique is a push-through body. All you have to do is blow up a balloon. Now, it doesn't really matter on this one because it's practice, right? We're not making animals. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a ball for the anchor ball to start, and then I'm gonna make two fairly long sections. I don't know, one hand length, less than a hand length. Doesn't matter, just two fairly long sections. And then I'm gonna make a third section the same size. Now once again, if I can't reach that with my anchor hand, I just pinch with my other hand, first of all. All right, so it wants to be about the same size, maybe just a scunch smaller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this into this. That's gonna lock in there. And the way I do it is not by feeding this through, I feed this section through, all right? I'm going to line it up right next to that. Now notice I'm holding my hand right up here. And by pushing my thumb there, it keeps that from coming in twisted. And I'm going to grab the sides, push my thumbs, so that that ball goes through the other two. All right. And that makes that kind of section. All right. So let's do it again. Two sections, any size. A third section, close to the same size. Push it with your thumbs, roll it with your fingers. Push it and roll it. The rolling aspect takes away the friction. Okay? All right, I'm gonna repeat that two more times. Okay, I'm gonna do a longer one. Just like that. Okay, third section, measure to about the same size, push it through. Now the reason that I do that, I'm going to take this end one and lock it. Lock it through one time, just to make sure that doesn't come untwisted. But now what I can do with my middle one is I can give it a zigzag, right? A zigzag. Same exact thing, it's just got a zigzag in it. And then, this is kind of crazy. I'm gonna make sure I have enough room for this. I'm gonna do four ball circle. I could do a six ball circle, I could do a five ball circle. I mean, it has to be an even number. Six, eight, 10, doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do is the same thing. I'm gonna push this section through it just like we did before. Roll it around, push it through. And what happens is they hook together, but you've now got some character on it. All right? So that's all from the push through concept. Two sections the same size, third section that you push through. Um, with the balls, I make the, sec with the middle section first, and then I make the even number of balls and those will be going around the outside. So if you get balls on the outside, let me show you again. The balls become the two sections that roll. The balls become the two sections that roll. Okay? So practice all of those things. Practice regular push-throughs, different size. Practice one with four balls, one with five, six balls, one with eight balls. And, and you have to make the section a little longer, like this one might be the eight ball size. Um, but it gives a different look for each thing. So this is a push through body, a push through three section look. Practice them, practice them, practice them. 10 of each one, 20 of each one before you come back. Okay, now this next one I call an apple tie. The reason I call it an apple tie is there's a balloon where you do this technique. You push it through. It's like a round balloon. You push it through, but it has a special green end. You do this, and it looks like an apple with a green stem. It's red. has a green stem. So uh, I call it an apple tie. 
I'm going to push the knot into the balloon and then grab it with my other hand. So I'm pushing it into the balloon. I'm going to grab it with my other hand and then I'm going to twist that off. Okay. Now that creates enough friction right here to hold it. All right. And there's a lot of stuff. You can make that into like a hat. You can make it into different kind of faces. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. All right, now that's a small one. So let me take this out. I'm gonna to try to use the same balloon. We'll see if it'll let me. All right. I'm gonna stick it in a little deeper. Maybe a finger like deeper. Now to get it off my finger, I push, 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 push it until it comes off. All right, so now that, in order to hold here, I just push the knot backwards into that first section, and now there's a lot of friction here, and it'll hold. But now you can start to do things with it. I can pull the knot down, and now I get that kind of look. I get like a kidney type of look. All right. So this is really, really powerful to get lots of different things. I use this for squirrels, I use it for Tyrannosaurus Rex, Knight in Shiny Armor. All right. Same thing as everything. It's all about proportions. Now I'm going to go full finger length, and then I'm going to go more, and I'm going to go more, and I'm going to go more, and I'm going to grab it. Kind of off finger, pushing it off my finger until I can get it pulled out. And you see what happens? You can get all kinds of crazy motion out of this with that kind of thing, right? Like I use this for a uh, brontosaurus head, right? Actually, I'll tell you what, just for fun, body. I'm going to do a push-through body. I wasn't really planning on making this, so my proportions aren't exactly right. But I just wanted to show you how that works. To make the brontosaurus head. Right? So practice that. A little bit in, a little bit further in, way in. Practice all of those 10 times, 10 of each. I know it's crazy. It's a lot of balloons, but trust me, you're going to be able to make amazing stuff with it. Okay, this is a technique that creates friction, and there's a reason for it, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by doing exactly what I did before. Fingertip in, pull my fingertip out, twist it off. But as I twist it, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of air out of it. So that it's small, smaller. And mainly, it's not the size, it's the, uh, the, the um, stretching of the balloon. You want to have more stretch. You don't want it to have to be tight, 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 tight. All right. Now this, in fact, won't may not hold. There may not be enough friction in it. It might come out. But I'm going to add more friction to it by dividing this in half. Okay. I'm going to use my fingertips, just the tips of my fingers. One hand's going one direction. One hand's going the other direction. Pinching down in the middle the best I can until one end starts to go around. Then when one end goes around, I twist them all, twist them all, twist them all. And what happens is I get that apple tie divided in half. That's crazy, but it works. <laughs> I know it seems crazy, but it works. This is what I use for horse lips, unicorn lips. Um, there's lots of things I can use this for. But not only can I do that, I'm going to show you a crazy five ball circle. Let's say that's a arm, one, two, three balls, and another one. 
basic five ball circle. You've already learned that, right? Five ball circle. Arm, three dots, arm. I'm going to do an ear tie, just like I would for the mouse, just like I would for the teddy bear, just like I would for the cat. Exactly the same. So far, I haven't done anything different, not counting this. But now I'm going to divide these in half like I did this. Pinch with my fingertips. One hand's turning one direction. The other hand is pushing the other direction. Once I get it twisted, then I'll wrap it a few times to get a lot of friction in there. Pinch, twist, pinch, twist. So now the ears are divided in half. It's a basic ear tie, but it's divided in half. Now there's so much friction that I can pop the middle one. And those will separate just like that. I can use that for airplane wings, birds wings. I can use it to do helicopter blades. I can use it to do um, actual legs if I want to do separate legs on something. This triangle could be a magic wand, I guess. So I'm going to show you that pop tie one more time. First section doesn't matter how long it is. Three balls the same size, small balls. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the air out when I do it, so that they're soft balls. Okay. Ear twists here. Ear twists. Ear twist here. Ear twist. Divide them in half. Divide in half. Divide them in half. Okay. Now you didn't, I didn't say it, but I'm going to hold these when I pop it. The reason is I don't want them to because sometimes with the rubber, you know, it'll bounce back. I don't want them to unspin when I pop it. So I'm holding these, popping the middle one, and they come apart. And they will hold. Kids can play with these. Right? Okay, finally it went. Let's see how long. There we go. Finally it went. So these hold pretty strong. They're pretty darn strong. All right. Pop tie. Uh, arm, three balls, another arm. Ear twist, divide the ear in half. Okay. And then the apple tie that you divide in half also. So practice both of those. Pop ties and apple ties. How many times? 10, 20, 30. Practice it. Then you'll be able to make tons of animals. Okay, this next one opens up a whole nother bag of worms, right? A whole nother can of fish. Um, I'm going to teach you how to put a bubble inside, okay? Uh, I'm sure this is out there on the web, but this is part of my basic training, so that's why I'm including it. I made a pretty short one. I'm going to make a small bubble. I want it to be a little bit smaller than the, the diameter of this. Just a, just a bit, not much. Now, if I hold the knot, it doesn't want to go in, right? But if I put my three fingers, one, two, three, on three different areas around the ball, and then I move this hand down a little bit, and the reason I do that is as I start to push it in, now it goes inside my hand, and my hand is giving me all this support around here. All right, so I put my thumb all the way in there, all right? I'm going to grab the ball, pull my thumb out. Now you need to go a ways, all right? The reason is I'm going to cut this thing off, all right? I've got a cutter over here on my pump, and I just cut that section off. But if I let go, that thing's going to shoot right out. So all I do is put my thumb on top. I put my thumb on top. And then I grab the ball, and it will fall and be separate inside. 
Now this is still open. I've still got my thumb on top of it. So I have to come down a ways so that I have a little room here to twist and tie it again. All right. I want you guys to be able to see this well. So I'm gonna just go, there we go. Just like that. All right. There we go. Ball, smaller than the diameter of this. Push in. Pull your thumb out. Now I'm gonna twist this off and cut it off. Put my thumb on top. Pull the ball separate. And now I should have two in there. Yeah, I've got two in there. Twist it off, give myself some room to make the tie. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Ball, stuff it inside, pull my thumb out, twist it off, cut it off, just like that. Put my thumb on top, Pull the ball free. And now I don't have enough room to do one more, right? This is actually a sculpture that I'm actually teaching you at the same time. I'm gonna push it so that the balloon goes all the way to here. So I'm pushing the air down and I wanna push it so that it expands a lot. And then I tie the knot. So there's nothing on the end. And then I'll cut this off. And what I made is peas in a pod. All right. I used to just draw this on, but this time I'm gonna put this on, give him a smiley face, just like that. Peas in a pod. All right, so practice pushing, practice pushing, practice pushing, practice pushing. Now, I'm not sure <laughs> if I have enough room, but I'm gonna give it a try. If I bring the balls down to where the knot is, if I hadn't tied that off, and I bring the balls down, what I wanna do is let just enough air out that it catches in the end, and that that stops the air from coming out. So there's three balls together. Now when I squeeze air, it shoots like a gun. I'll make another one so you can see. Okay, so I made another one with two balls in it so that I have a lot of air in it, all right? I'm gonna squeeze those two balls up to the end where the open knot is. And if I twist this off, they'll hold on to there because now there's no air coming up. And what I used to do, this is what I would do at restaurants, is I would say, I'm gonna make a volcano. This is my volcano, all right? And um, hold on one second. This is a volcano. What I'm gonna do is make it shoot. So I go one, two, and then I'd aim it right at somebody, and then I'd say, no, okay. One, two, now as I squeeze it, they should go up. See how they're working way up? Whoop, I shot one. Whoop, I shot a second one. They go fast, but they'll go about five feet. They'll go about 10 feet. So first track, practice making peas in a pod, and then practice making a volcano. Okay, peas in a pod and a volcano. Yay! Okay, about the only thing that I want to show um, to wrap this up, this part of this up, is uh, how to make the curly one. Uh, you see the, the curly one back there behind me? Um, I, when I learned to make balloons back in the 76, 
There was no such thing as a balloon pump. They had a bicycle pump, but it was lousy. You would have had to pump 500 times to get a balloon inflated. The pumps they have now are great. I have now a Ladera, no, Legenda, L-A-G-E-N-D-A -E pump. I literally just bought this off of uh, Amazon last month for a, for a Christmas party that I had right at the end of the year because I had to do 90 balloon hats in 90 minutes. And so I didn't want to pump it because I've been using the pump for a long time. Um, and I just put off buying one of these. Now, I love this baby. It works so nice. Um, you just put the balloon on it, push the button, it blows it right up. Uh, I bought it off of Amazon, 189 bucks. Uh, according to a friend of mine who makes these, that's a dang good price. It's gone down about 100 bucks since COVID. So if you want to buy a, a pump, I'd re recommend it. Legenda Balloon Inflator. It's on Amazon. I'll put it in the link. Um, anyway, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to blow up a balloon with a curl. They used to make balloons called whirly birds, um, and they had a, a line of rubber that was thicker than the rest of the balloon, and it would automatically blow up that way. I, of course, blew these up for the first 25, 30 years of my career, so I would just blow up like that. All right. Now, because of COVID and other things, we're not blowing them so much. Uh, so you can do it with a pump. I had a friend of mine do it with a pump and a PVC pipe. Um, you might, if you have a pump, have a friend. No, if you have a balloon pump, pump it up. You might have a friend do the pumping and you put it around your finger. Like you have one of the kids do the pumping or you can put it around their finger. I think that would be fun to have a kid help you make this. I just wanted to show you that here on the balloon pump, it's exactly the same thing. I just want to show you. Put it here. So what happens is the part that's next to your finger inflates slower than the part that's away from your finger. All right? And all of a sudden, you have a nice twisty. So I make these on hats. I have a surfer, and this would be the wave. Um, I also use this for fun when I'm doing a show uh, because kids like that stuff. So the only thing I want to show you is when you're wrapping it around your finger, you start with the end under your thumb, and you have to make sure to wrap it there's a, you feel it, it's flat. It can't be twisted at all because if it's twisted at all, it won't work. It has to be nice and flat around your finger. You can also do it around two fingers like this if you want to get a bigger. All right, so see that makes a bigger uh, thing than this, bigger ones. All right, so I just wanted to show you this because um, I've used it on my hat video. I've used it on other videos. I have it on my surfer video, and I just wanted to be able to show you guys so you know how to do it. All right, so now let's show you some things that you can do with what you've got. All right. So now let's show you some things that you can do with what you got, right? All right. Okay, this first one is going to use the push through body. Um, and this is a sculpture that I invented. I think it was in my second book um, uh, back in 1980, 1981, whenever it was. Um, and it's going to be a cockatoo. So I inflate it to about four fingers. And I'm going to make a three ball head like a um, poodle. Only I make the first bubble a little smaller and the head a little bigger. And I'm going to push the head through the circle to lock it off. Then a section which is going to wind up being the parrot head, the cockatoo head. And then I'm going to do a three section body. And I measure it because I also want to have a long tail. So 
So one, two, and then the third section is the part I push for. Three section body. All right. Now the last thing for the body part here is an ear twist right here. I'm, I'm hooking this section with this section. Holding these two in one hand and pulling that one ear tie out. Twist it a few times to make sure you get a good seal. All right. And I line it up to where the tail is on the single back body. These two become the front wings. That becomes the back of the body. All right. Now the last thing I do is pull this knot down into the neck. See how I twist it? Now I'm still holding on to that. I'm going to push that back through the beak like we do with the push through. I'm going to push it back through there and that helps lock it off and hold it there. Alright. Big eyes. Big eyes. And two nostrils on the beak. Okay. So what it is, is it's a cockatoo bird. I'm going to back up so you can see. Cockatoo bird. What I would do with a kid is I would say, hey, can you point your finger just like this? Point your finger just like this. And you pull the foot and the tail apart. Pull the foot and the tail apart. And what happens is it will sit right on their finger just like a bird. You can also grab a piece of their shirt or their jacket and it will sit on their shoulder. Now eventually slip off of their shoulder, but if you have if they have a loose shirt and it's like a button down uh, where it's thin, it'll pinch right there and they can wear it just like that. So that is one of the ways you'd use a push through body. Anytime you have a, an animal with a thick body, um, uh, what am I talking about? A hippopotamus, a cow, a, a elephant, anything like that, you can use this to make a thick body. Okay? Okay, now this one is on my um, Dooney's Originals. I do a knight on a horse. This horse is not original. I got this from Ralph Dewey, I think, out of uh, one of his books. But I want to show it to you to show you what you can do with it. Okay? I'm going to do the, e the apple tie and make the horse lips. Remember I said the horse lips were going to come later? It's just an apple tie that I've squeezed a little bit of the air out of. And then I divide that in half. Okay, so I get horse lips, just like that. Horse head, and then one bubble to make a horse ear, the ear tie. Now I'm going to put a second ear tie into that same place. All right? Second ear tie, they're all going to go both together. Remember, all you have to do to get it done is pull them apart. Pull it apart, twist it around. And as long as there's no friction in there, as long as you don't have too much friction, you should be able to line it up so that those ears go on the sides of the head and the face is just like that. Okay, now I'm going to do a neck about this long and a six bubble circle. Okay. Now I'm going to parrot body push this through. I'm going to have three section push through. And I'm going to pull the bite fingers, those bubbles around the outside of the neck. Now it's a little tight of where the ears are, but no problem. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And that becomes the horse's mane on the back. Now I'm just about out of air. Because, again, I'm worrying about talking to you rather than I am uh, my proportions. But I might make it. There we go. Last thing I do is bend the tail back. Okay. So I just wanted to show you what's possible. Okay. So this is the lips. 
teddy bear ears, which you already know. And then the push through section can give you this kind of a look for lots of different things. All right. Okay, if you want to see a great use of the pop tie, look at my um, original video on the on the um, seagull. All right. So I'm just going to show you a simple, simple, simple one uh, that uses the pop tie. Okay. So I blew this balloon up and I want a lot of room because this is going to be a hummingbird and we're going to make this into the beak. All right. But a hummingbird is tiny, right? So I did not tie this off. I'm still holding on to it. All I'm going to do is twist it off down there and let it out. And now I have just a little tiny balloon like that. All right. Little body. Wing. One, two, three. Wing. And a little head. Pop tie. Ear twist go around. Ear twist goes around. Divide in half. Divide that in half. Divide this in half. Okay. And then the last thing I do is any kind of bird beak. If I squeeze that, that's not what I want because it goes straight. But if I bend this uh, rubber part down, this uninflated part down, and I just give it a little squeeze, it's going to make a bird head with a long beak, right? Pop the wings, just like that. Spread them out. And you've got a little hummingbird, just like that. But I just wanted to show you a, a, an example of what could be done with the pop tie. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. So I made one with two balls in it. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make the third. This is going to be exactly like the peas in a pod I made in the demonstration. All right. Except I'm going to do something a little different. So obviously for years I handed out the peas in a pot. No big deal. Now I'm just going to add one thing to that. And what I did was instead of squeezing where it was completely um, uh, stiff, where all of the air was in here, I still want it to be a little bit loose. All right, three balls. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it, but they're in there. Now what I'm going to do is take a five ball circle and instead of locking this with the bubbles, I'm going to tie it off. Just like that. Okay, so what I wind up is with a five ball circle. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Tie it with the knot, just with the knot. Just like that. And get rid of the rest. Okay, two five ball circles. Now with the piece in a pod, I'm gonna twist a little bubble here to end and put that just on it like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. And what happens is, now it's tight. Now there's three balls inside there. And it's tight. All right. And what that is, is it's a baby rattle. All right. So another use of the piece in a pot. All right. I have a bigger baby rattle, a bigger baby rattle on uh, my original sculptures, all right? But I thought I'd show you guys this one for that part.
Okay, so this is going to be also included in my Dooney Inventions uh, playlist because it is one that I created, okay? Um, but I just want to show you a different concept of what can be done with all of these things, all right? So this one is pretty short because I have lots of twists and ties, all right? I'm going to make a head, two arms with a pop tie. Just like that. Here's twist on each end of the pop tie. Divide them in half. Just like that. Divide them in half. Just like that. Now a body. Two legs. And I'm going to do two, like feet. So two legs and two feet. All right. Now I'm going to do like a pop tie. I'm going to do a foot here and a foot here, but I'm not going to divide them in half. All right. Also be fish lips. All right. So now this is how I make a person stand up with no tail. All right. I'm going to let all the air out of this. And if I left it like that, it would eventually come untwisted. But I'm going to stretch it down between the legs and into the feet. Okay? So what I've got is I've got a body. Let's see. We'll give it, let's give him sunglasses. Sunglasses. I'll give him a smile, and a smile, no big deal. I usually give him like uh, surfer shorts, I don't know, bright colors, lots of different activities, just like that. And I give him a belly button. Once again, I'm, I would do a little bit better artwork, you know, if I was going to hand this out. All right. Now, normally I wouldn't pop this till the end, but I'm going to pop it so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pop his arms apart, just like that. And what we get is a surfer standing with an extra length of balloon. Now, if I add this to a short balloon that I cut off, and I wrap that extra piece of balloon around and then back up into the piece, just like that, he'll stand on top of the board surfer, right? Ball here. I also blow up a curly one. And what I've got here is I've got a surfer riding the tube. Just like that. Pretty cool, huh? So again, that was all about just showing you how you can use this stuff, right? There's so many different ways to use all of this stuff. So to wrap this up, I'm going to show you one more thing. Not that I think anybody's going to do it, but just that I don't want this technique to get lost, okay? And it may be lost already. I don't know, because I don't know anybody else around doing it, especially since the dawn of the pump age, right? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to come down about an inch and pinch it off. All right, I'm going to stretch this. Then when I blow it, I don't let this inflate. I kind of stretch it a little bit. And then I roll my fingers back so that a little bit of the balloon that wasn't stretched is here. So I want to start the balloon down from the end. Okay, and now I'm going to pull it out. Just like that. And what you get is you get a different shape on the end of the balloon. This is how I made elephants for a long time. So those are basically two bend ties. But then, if you do that, and you do that, you've got an elephant. Gives you an elephant head. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. 
short pack lengths, really short. Because you want the body to be the focus. This is a three ball push through. A three ball push through. And it looks at the body. Two legs at the end, little tiny tail. Okay? Now the reason is that if I do that, the two that I, the two that I push around, if I pull those out a little bit and put my legs in there, they will hold so that he's standing instead of that, where, look where they're out, pushing out, all right? So the idea is that you get the elephant just like that. Now, most people don't know that elephants have long eyelashes. An elephant's eyelash can grow up to a foot and a half long, 18 inches long. Elephants are also the only animals that have four knees, no elbows. All four limbs bend like a knee. All right, there we go. So that's how you make a basic elephant. Okay, don't kill yourself if you can't do it. But I just realized I should show you this too. Same thing, I'm going to include, inflate a balloon backwards. I'm going to stretch down here, down by the end. Because I want that to inflate first. See how that inflated first? And now when I blow it up, it's going to come up towards me. Just like this. And what I've got is I've got a balloon with room on either end. All right, so where I would use that is if I wanted to have a hat, like with a chin strap, something like that, but I wanted it to match. Bing, I'm gonna do a poodle tail on that end. Poodle tail on that end, and now they match. So I just thought I'd show you that technique too, once again, so it doesn't get lost, you know? I mean, where else are you gonna see it? Anyway, with these techniques, you guys should be able to do everything, all right? Anything out there on the web, you can do. Don't practice all of these until you get them down. When I send somebody out to go to work, they should be able to make a dog without thinking of it, a giraffe without thinking of it, a rabbit without thinking of it, um, a Mickey Mouse, a teddy bear, a kitty cat, uh, swords, which is uh, on uh, on my two balloon sculptures. Uh, so practice these, practice these, practice these, practice these. Add the two balloon sculptures video. Add the two balloon hats video. If you could do all of those without thinking about them, or at least start to do all of those without thinking about them, you're ready to go to work. Literally. If you can do those pretty good, knowing what you're doing, you could go to work. You could go to any clown company and say, hey, I'm trained in balloons. Do you need a balloon maker? All of a sudden, you're making money. Uh, you could go to a playground, make balloons for tips. You could go to a restaurant, say, hey, I'd be happy to work for free for just tips. And trust me, you'll make $10, $15, $20, $30 an hour in tips. Uh, you got to pay for your balloons out of that, but that way you get paid to practice. Get paid to practice. Get paid to practice. You remember those words? Get paid to practice. That's how professionals are made. Now, moms and dads, if you were just watching this, you probably aren't watching this second tape. Okay? Uh, but if you want to learn, if you want to do this for a living, get paid to practice. All right? Have a great time. I got more stuff coming. Talk to you later.